There were other of us who fought and, and fell behind the black ban banner during the civil rights era, not as Malcolm, as uh, Maddox tells us, I think very importantly here, Attorney Maddox, not so much for civil rights as for consumer rights. And it becomes sort of interesting that the civil rights struggle centered around lunch counters and retail stores. And you begin to realize that while this certainly was not the whole of civil rights, that there was an aspect having to do with consumption, the right to take our money and give it to people who hated our guts. And we see this still going on today. And again, we talk about this in black on black violence. People don't want to live next to you, hate the sight of you, miseducate the children, want to continue their oppression. And then what do we do? Beat each other up so that we can carry our money to them, buy the bus loads, and feel proud of ourselves and feel good after we've given it to them. And then we'll say, why are you doing that? It's my right as a United States citizen. <laughs> I'm telling you, you look at it very closely and you will see to a great extent many of the rights that we claim we have were really set up in a way so that the white community could get greater access to black resources and money. And watch, as we became desegregated, we engage in the wholesale disinvestment of the black community. And to a great extent, it was a result of getting caught up in these consumer rights, which is another game, by the way, to buy what I want, when I want it, as an expression of freedom. Watch that concept. I was talking to one man here in Chicago who was complaining about his daughter being mistreated by his white neighbors, he being the only black one in the neighborhood. What can I do about that? That's right. <laughs> oh, no, but it's my right to live where I want to live. And, you know, this is the expression of my right. And it's interesting that when we get through defining our rights, it almost always means carrying our money to white folk and giving our resources to white folk. But the ultimate thing that it means is that white oppression did not end there, did it? His right to buy into a neighborhood made his oppression even more clear. He bought his children into even more naked oppression by the very rights that he thought he had won and that he thought he was exercising. And to a great extent, the black community had run into that impasse. After getting all the fair housing laws and all of the lunch counter laws and the desegregation laws and the other laws passed, we were fit to be free at last, and yet we look up, and where are we? Suffering, still talking about what? The miseducation of our children, still talking about criminality in our communities, still talking about disease running rampant, still talking about poverty and unemployment, it was as the French says, the more things change, the more they what? Remain the same. We begin to realize then that this freedom of consumption was not liberation. 